So, thank you very much. I, I'm very happy to be here. And I, I feel privileged to be here sharing about worshiping God. And I saw that you were really into the prayer to praise the Lord. And I would like to talk about worshiping God is really having a very close, loving relationship with God. God is full of love. Some people just know of God's love. But we want to go deeper to really believe and experience God's love. And to have the love of God burning in our hearts. Every time I think of the love of God, I'll say, God is so wonderful. And sometimes I would cry. Because His love is very real. Amen. Amen. In 1998, 15 years after I became a pastor in 1983, Evangelist Carlos and Antonia from Argentina lay hand on me. And suddenly I felt power like electricity enter me. So strong, overwhelming my heart. I felt a great peace of God. Time will we don't have that interpretation. Sorry about those who don't understand English and thank you. And you know, at that time when the power of God went through me and the love of God filled my heart so strong, I felt love. I cried for a long time and I also felt great peace and burdens go away. And also I smell a sweet aroma. Wow. And I think it's from heaven. It smells so differently. Wow. And I was soaking in the presence of God so overwhelmed. I said, I never knew I could experience God like that. Hey. And I cried for a long time. I was totally without power and I laid on the floor for a long time. And I said, Lord, I never knew I could relate to you like that. Hey. I never knew I could experience God like that. Hey. And Starting that night, I went home and I spent a lot of time praying to God, praising God, and even in the bus. When I went home, I want to praise God, I want to lift my hand to praise God, and in the bus I cannot do that. So I put my hand leaning against the window. Oh, Jesus. And when I went home, I kept doing that. And then one day, I experienced the joy of the Lord. I said, this is wonderful to be filled with the joy of the Lord. And ever since then, every time I pray, the joy of the Lord would keep coming. Hey. And on a night when the joy of the Lord came to me, I want to keep the joy. I want to keep it every day. So on the way home, you know, in the bus, I cannot just laugh out loudly. I did this. <laughs> I was filled with the joy, but I did not laugh out loudly. loudly. But Every day after that, when I think of Jesus, the joy would just flow out, and the love of God would fill me. I said, I did not know that I can experience God's love, His joy, His power. And when I pray, I feel power going through my stomach and my legs, Praise. and the joy and the strength and the fire of the Holy Spirit. I want to love God. I want to serve God. Mm. I have the heart for different countries. I go to different places for free. I bring my own money to serve. God provided for me. And I want to bless people, different people. I want people to enjoy the love of God. Amen. To know how much He loves me. 
Many people know of God's love, but they don't have this intimate relationship to enjoy God's love or to be motivated by God's love and don't think of God's love as very personal. His love is very personal and full of feelings. Let me quote you a few Bible verses. Psalm 139 verse 5. Psalm 139 verse 5. There it says that you have enclosed me in, uh, in behind and before me and laid your hand upon me. Here it says the Lord is in front of me and behind me and lay his hand upon me. Now, it's talking about God serving us. How do we know that God is serving us like this? We notice that every time we pray, did God say, well, wait for your turn. You're, you're number 1001. Wait for your turn to eat, uh, and then I'll come to you. We don't have to wait. Anytime you cry to God, Lord Jesus, hallelujah, and His peace and His joy will come to you. That means God is always there. And actually, many times when we do not pray to God, when we sin, God keep moving in our heart. God keep moving in our heart to draw us to repentance and draw us to follow God. It shows that God is with us all the time. You know, God is one person who has been rejected many times by people, but yet He continues to move in our heart. Let me ask you, if you tell your friend, I don't want you anymore, don't come to see me anymore, will He still come back? Well, He might come back one time, and then you say, no more, don't show up here. He won't come back anymore. But many people, they don't want Jesus sometimes. Actually, all Christians have this experience. I don't want to obey you, Lord. Many times we in our heart we say, I cannot do it. Like God moves in the heart of people, don't marry a non-Christian. But many Christians would just reject God. Or God say, don't tell this lie. Don't be angry with your spouse, with your husband or wife. But many times we still get angry with that because they say, he treated me like this, I cannot retreat him with goodness. We cannot overcome wickedness with goodness. So many times we reject God. But God did not stop moving in our heart. When we think about it, when I think about that, I say, God, you're so good. You're so wonderful that you move in our heart all the time. And think of this verse, is in front of us and behind us. And he laid his hand on us. He's serving us all the time. Now, I'm sad to say that. I know that many people from Africa have been taken to America and different countries to be slaves. And when they were taken there, they suffer a lot. And then when the master say, come, they will come. I saw in a movie what they did to the little black kid. He will tell the kid, lie down, and then pull up his shirt, and then old man put his feet on top of the belly to keep warm. That's how the Africans have to serve their master. Let me ask you this question. Is God our slave? No, by no means. Never. He's not our slave. He's the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. But He serves us like a slave, and more than a slave. He serves us day and night, all the time, and He moves in our heart, and He has been rejected by us so many times, and yet He still continues to move in our heart. The more I think about this, the every time I experience the joy of the Lord, or the love of the Lord, I say, Lord, I don't deserve it. I don't deserve it. But yet you come to move in our heart, it's so wonderful. And, you know, I saw a, a, a video, online you can look for it, that's someone called Ian McCormick, that he died, and then he went to heaven. And then he saw Jesus. And then he said, I don't deserve it, I have sinned. And then he saw a wave came from Jesus, and the wave hit him. And he felt, he thought the wave is gonna hit him, send him back to hell, because he, he was a sinner, in the last moment he repented. But instead, the wave came to him, it was overwhelming love. And he said, nobody can be ready for the love of Jesus. And then he experienced this when he was young. And when he talked about it, when he was a middle-aged man, maybe 50-some years old, and he cried. He said, nobody can be ready to see Jesus. Nobody can be ready for the love of Jesus. 
And then he said to Jesus, I have slept with men and women. And again, the wave came again. And the love overwhelmed him. And when I saw this needle, I said, I want to be in heaven. Amen. I want to live in the love of God. But I want to stay here to tell people how great is the love of God. Because every time I think of Jesus, His love will overwhelm me. His joy will overwhelm me. I want to spread this news and tell people, yes, Romans 5.5 5 says that the Holy Spirit will pour the love of God into our heart. That is true today. And in Isaiah 61 verse 1 to 3 talks about He will heal the broken heart. He will comfort all who mourn. And He will give us the oil of gladness instead of mourning. And I've seen this so many times it happen. After I experience the Holy Spirit, every time I cry to Jesus, I experience His love. And then I pray for many people, lay hands on many people, and even online. I use phone calls, and because I have put many videos on YouTube, and people call me out, and then I pray for them. And they experience the love of God, the healing of God, and being set free. And I said, this is so wonderful. It's so wonderful Amen. how God is a loving God. So I beg you, not just to know about God's love, not just believe, but to experience His love and to be overwhelmed by His love and have a intimate one-to-one -one love relationship. Amen. And have a one-to-one. -one. And say to Jesus, yes, Lord, I love you. Every time of worship, don't just say, but say, Lord, I love you. I know that you love me. Hallelujah. Amen. And a passage. Romans 8, 38-39. Romans 8, verses 8, 38 to 39. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Yeah. Nothing can separate us from the love of Christ. That the love of Christ is always with us. Think of this, if this is you, the love of Christ hold on to you all the time. There is nothing that can separate you from the love. And we experience that because every time we come to God, we are overwhelmed by the love of God. And we think about this verse. His love is around me all the time. There is nothing that can separate us from the love of God. So when I pray, I pray like this. Lord, I know that you are around me. You are hugging me. Please help me to take away any kind of hindrance, anything that hinders you to stop your love to penetrate me. Please help me to live in your love and have a very intimate relationship with you and to be motivated by you. You know, I'm 64 and you know, many people retire at this age and I thank God that God give me health and strength because I have the joy of the Lord, I have the strength of the Lord and God gives me health. And many people will retire at 70, but 70, only six years from now, I say, no, Lord, I want to serve you longer. 80 years old, I only have 14 years. Lord, no matter how long you give me, maybe I'm 100 years old, or 110, 120, I'm willing to serve you and tell people how wonderful God's love is. I'm mo totally motivated by the love of God. And I go to some places, the washroom smells so bad, you can smell it a long distance away. You will be able to find it when you get there. Because you can smell it a long distance away. But yet, I still go there. Because I know those people need Jesus. And I go to some countries that the Christians are persecuted because I'm motivated by the love of God. When we live in love like this, then when we praise and worship, our heart will be motivated by the love of God. Another verse about the love of God is Zephaniah 3.17. Zephaniah 3.17. Now you know John 3.16, and this is 3.17. The second part it says that He will take great delight in you. He will quiet you with His love, and He will rejoice over you with singing. Here it says that God has strong emotional love with us. He takes great delight in us. He's very happy to with us. Let me ask you, how many people in the world are very happy to see you all the time? I'm so happy to see you. It's so, so good to see you. Do you have many people like that? 
maybe some, but not too many, right? And then he'll quiet you with his love. All the time, he'll send his love to quiet you. One time I went to a children's hospital and I saw a mother holding a baby. The baby was probably sick. And the mother, and the baby was sleeping. And the mother looked at the baby from the head to the toe. And then from the toe to the head. And when she was looking at the baby, she was smiling all the way. And the baby was not responding at all. But she kept smiling. And I just stood there. And I said, God, this is so beautiful. This is so beautiful. And God is looking at us with love all the time. God is looking at you with love right now. Amen. I thank God. God gave me a wonderful wife. I carry her picture all the time. And we talk on the phone a few times a day. And my wallet too. Everywhere. On our pictures. And me. In all our pictures, our heads stick together. My wife really loves me. And I really love her. I want to keep the best marriage. Actually, I haven't seen anyone with such a loving relationship so far. I haven't had anyone that continue to have this loving relationship. Let me tell you, when I eat, I eat with one hand. Where's the other hand? I'm holding her hand. Sometimes, she would look at me, because she has to get up early. I said, and when, we, we went, when we go to sleep, I said, go to sleep, close your eyes. He said, let me look at you longer. Now, before I came here, on that night, she refused to close her eyes. She kept looking at me. Let me tell you, God loves you like that. I hope your heart is touched. There is none like him. There is no one like him. If you have a spouse like Jesus, you will say, wow, I'm so proud of this spouse. But now we have, I know nobody has a spouse like Jesus. And we have someone who is the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, who loves us so much. Can we be moved? You know, everything I see, I see the love of God. When I drink water, so soothing. I think of the love of God. Is God created water so wonderful? If water is like muddy oil, we still have to drink it. But oil, water is clear. When you relax your body, now try it. Close your eyes. Take a few deep breaths. Close your eyes. Take a few deep breaths. Do you feel comfort and relaxed? God has created, in, created us in such a way when you relax and take deep breaths, you feel good. That's how good God is. And He has created a mother who loves us so much in the world. She's the only person that always loves us. And it came from the love of God. So when we worship, we don't just worship, we don't, we don't just sing, but we think about God, you're loving me right now. He's so happy, he takes great delight in us. He quiet us with his love and he rejoices over us with singing. Is there someone in the world who sees you and is and they will say, wow, I'm so happy to see you. And rejoice over you singing. Whoa! Every time I see my wife and I return, when I return on Sunday, my wife, when she sees me, she will, wow! And she will respond like that. She'll be very happy all the time when we see each other on a video phone. She will always respond like that. And God is like that too. God reacts to us with feelings, with love. He fills us with His love. He looks at us with love. So when we worship, please think about the love of Jesus. Think about how much He cares about us. In Psalm 22, 3, you all know this verse. But you are holy. You that dwells in the praises of Israel. That you live in our praise. When we praise you, you stay with us. 
You stay with us. When we praise you, you come and have a stronger presence of God. So praise and worship is something that brought great work of God to many people. When many people praised God, they felt a stronger presence of God. But I encourage you, please concentrate in the Lord. Instead of just singing or dancing. Dancing is good. When you feel free, hallelujah, oh hallelujah. But when you pay attention only to the steps, if you pay attention only to the steps, you might miss the point. You want to pay attention to Jesus who loves us so much. If you want to express like that, oh Jesus, I'm so free. Oh, it's okay. It's good when we think about Jesus. But every time when we think of Jesus, please respond to his love. And the more we think about his love, you know, do you like food? Do you enjoy food? It's created by God in love. Do you like to see the blood butterflies and the flowers? It's created by God in love to give us a beautiful environment. Although in this area, I don't see many flowers. <laughs> but I know you have seen flowers somewhere. That everywhere, I see the love of God. When I see your eyes, I see how you hunger for God, how you want to worship God. I see the love of God moving in your heart Amen. to mold you so that you are like this today, that you would respond to God. But we can always go higher and higher in the love of God to respond to God's love. You know, for the whole day long, I'll be like this, oh Jesus, you're loving me. <laughs> Even in the middle of the night, when I think of Jesus, oh Jesus, you're loving me. And the joy of the Lord will come out. The joy of the Lord will come out. And I said, this is so wonderful. And I hope you all stay in the, in the, in the joy of the Lord. Samuel in the Old Testament is one prophet who has trained a group of prophets to praise God all the time. In 1 Samuel chapter 10 and, first, uh, and chapter 19, you can read about this group of prophets. And in 1 Samuel chapter 10 verse 5, it talks about that Samuel anointed Saul to be the first king of Israel and then told him to go to a group of prophets. And then he said that when you get there, you see a group of prophets and they will be with string instruments, tambourines, flute, and a harp. They will be playing music and they will be prophesying. And then, so this group of people were praising God all the time. And then Samuel said, then the Spirit of the Lord will come upon you and you will prophesy with them and be turned into a new man. That in the presence of this praise and worship, the presence of God is so strong, when Saul went there, he'll be changed to a new man. And then he said this, when this signs come to you, that you do as occasion demands, for God is with you. Now God is with us in a few ways. First, He is everywhere, the only person of God. God is everywhere. Second, God is in the heart of Believers. Now, if Samuel is talking about the presence of God in the believers, he would tell Saul, go to any Israelites who believe in God, who follow God. But he did not. He said, go to a group of prophets who will be playing music and probably worshiping God and prophesying. And when you go there, you will change to a new man. And because the Lord is with you. So he's talking about a strong presence of God. A strong presence of God and the people of God come to God with love and say, Lord, you're so wonderful. You're so beautiful. I want to stay in your presence. I love you. I want to respond to your love. When we react to God like that, when we respond to God like that, His presence will become stronger and stronger. And I've seen meetings like this all the time. I've led people to worship God, to love God, and people can enter a strong presence of God and touch by the Holy Spirit. And now I'm going to um, share with you some of these ways how we can lead worship. Now first, of course, when we ourselves praise and worship, we need to develop this daily habit. The daily habit of a personal relationship. This is the basis of leading worship. 
that any time we say, Lord, you are here. You are so good. You have done these wonderful things in my life. You are so wonderful. You know, I always think about God's wonders. Let me tell you, three times I was almost hit in accidents. Two times I was on ice and the car spit. I, one time I spit and then I turned to another lane and then a truck passed immediately. So if I had spit one split second later or one split second earlier, I would have been hit by the truck. And at that time, I was seeing a car in front of me and I had no way to turn away. We were both going at high speed. And what happened was, I said to Jesus, Jesus Lord, I didn't know I had to come to you so soon. I didn't know. I didn't have the chance to go to the nations and now I'm coming to you so soon. And I was ready to see Jesus. But in the last moment, the car turned away. And I said, Lord, thank you. My life is yours. You give it back to me. Every time I think of it, I think of the love of Jesus. So we need to have this daily love relationship. When I brush my teeth, when I take showers, when I walk, when I just anywhere, I'll be loving God. Oh, hallelujah. This is the basis of praise and worship and also leading worship. Anytime it's not just saying hallelujah, but to say, God, you're so beautiful. So beautiful to have your love. So wonderful to have your love. Now how I would suggest how we can lead to praise and worship and lead people to enter a stronger presence of God. First, we can have Prayer of grace. Now this is a term that I make up myself. Prayer of grace is like this. We can say this prayer every day, every day. You can close your eyes now and follow me in your heart. And listen to the prayer of grace. It's declaring the grace and the love of God. Oh Lord, you're right here with us. You're blessing us right now. You look at each person here. Each person here, you look at us in love. You have put so much effort into our lives. You want to bless us more and more and more. You have used so many people to draw us to believe in Jesus. And you have used so many people to help us grow spiritually. And even though we have rejected you many times, you continue to move in our heart. Oh Lord, you're loving us all the time. You're in front of us and behind us right now. You are laying your hand on us. You want us to be filled with your love and to be motivated by your love and to be changed by your love and to be motivated to be used by you. Oh Lord Jesus, hallelujah! <laughs> so that's the prayer of grace. In the lead pray, praise and worship, we can use prayer of grace to declare that God is blessing us right now. God is with us now. And then we also need to have words of instruction. What does it mean? It will be something like this. Let us open our heart. Let us cry to Jesus with feelings. Let us come to God and love Him and think of the good things of God. So our instructions to people. And then number three, then we can help. Worship and love. Oh Jesus, I like you. I love you. You are the really in my heart. You are beloved by me. You are so precious, so wonderful. And when you say it, please say it with feelings. Because when you have feelings, it comes from the bottom of your heart. Then you really say it, Lord Jesus, it is so wonderful to have you. I want to love you all the time. So when you lead praise and worship, you can use these three ways of speaking. One is prayer of grace. Declare the grace of God. And every day, we can do that every day. When you wake up, you say, the Lord is loving me now. I'm beloved by the Lord. I'm precious in the sight of God. God wants to do something great in my life today. And then in a leading worship, we can tell people, come, oh come, and open our heart and hunger for God and think about the love of God. And then thirdly, we can praise and worship and love God, oh Jesus, and pour out from our heart with feelings. It's very important to have feelings. You listen to me and look at my expression. I have feelings. Actually, because God can restore our feelings. Many people, when they get older, they don't smile anymore. It's hard to smile anymore. 
because they have restrained their feelings for so long. I hope you let your feeling go free, not your emotions, not your negative emotion, but the feeling. When you express response to God, you say, Lord, you're so wonderful. It's so wonderful to have you. So you will express strong feelings of God. And that will lead people into the presence of God. To lead people to see the wonders of God. And when we sing, we can move with sometimes it's fast music, but sometimes gentle music. With feeling. When we talk and when we sing. Oh, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. With feelings. To bring people in the presence of God. To let people think about the love of God. And I'm going to lead a time of praise and worship now. And I hope that we all will come in the presence of God. And love God totally, wholeheartedly. And let the love of God transform us. This is a daily practice. A daily thing. Always say, God, you are the best that can happen to me. You are the best that can happen to me. Without you, everything I have is gone. But with you, I have everything. Everything we have was created by God. And so we respond to God in love and say, Lord, it's so wonderful, so wonderful to have you. Please help me to set up one of these down here. And then I need that acoustic guitar. Oh, Thank you, Jesus. Our spirit songs that we can sing with freedom. I will demonstrate that too. And I know that many of you have done that before too. Oh, Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus, please rise to your feet. Oh, Jesus, it's so wonderful to have you. It's so wonderful to be loved by you. We are all precious in your sight. If we are motivated by your love, we are filled with your love, our life will never be the same again. Our life will be different. Let me tell you, when I have this love fill me all the time. My heart is always motivated by God. It's like a fireball burning in me all the time. I have the love of God fill me all the time and motivate me. And I enjoy, let me tell you, ministering to me is like heaven. Jesus, hallelujah. Jesus, hallelujah. Oh, oh, you can cry with me. Oh, 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 Thank you. 
Lord Jesus, burn in our heart that we say, Lord Jesus, oh, touch us with your love. Touch us with your love. Hallelujah. Now try, open your heart. Open your arms. Jesus, come, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Cry with your heart. Thank you, Jesus. So wonderful to have you. So wonderful to have you. Hallelujah. <laughs> so wonderful to have you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I hope that we're all always trying to end the presence of God. Always end the presence of God. When we praise and worship, to build up this personal relationship with God. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name we worship. Amen. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's a loving God, a caring God. Live in His love. Hallelujah. God bless you all. Please be seated. And if you go on YouTube, or Facebook, you can look for Pastor Yip, Y-I-P, Y-I-P, just as it sounds, Y-I-P, Pastor Yip, Facebook or YouTube, you can see some of the videos there, and it's, my heart is just to bless people, I always go to bless people, actually I should be coming back in July, and to organize training session for people to experience God more, how to carry the anointing of God, how to pray for people to do evangelism and lead people to worship God and, and be lifted up to serve God. My goals are actually ministers and people who want to serve God, people who want to be trained to serve God. I have been a seminary uh, professor and I have done revival meetings and training. My strength is in training, to train people how to be filled with the Holy Spirit and serve God and take care of different problems, how not to be affected by feelings, negative thinking, how not to be affected by people, how not to be affected by sin and overcome sin and have victory and then serve God, be trained to serve God, to bless your church. My heart is to bless your churches and we'll, uh, we'll let Bishop know about this in the future and then I'm happy to come and bless and I'm happy to and hopefully this praise and worship will lead you into the presence of God to learn to say to God, yes Lord, you're standing in front of me. I love you. I appreciate your love for me. It's so good. <laughs>